I think I made the threads backwards. Oh, fuck. Just went in, said hello to David. Uh, figured we'd ask his permission before breaching the door with the 50 cal. Uh, we are just about to commission the V3, but before we do, we've got a couple last minute tweaks, uh, things that we learned on the V1 that we need to incorporate into the V3 CAD before we go have it made. This is like really like the final adjustments period before the V3 gets made. So it's, uh, if we don't change it now, it's, it's kind of like make your changes or forever hold your peace. So there's little tiny changes to the extractor, gas tube design, things like that. Some new designs we want to try out that we think are going to work better than the ones we have. So uh, just the last little bit of little changes and tweaks and whatnot before we're locked in for good on the V3 and we can go ahead and have that made. So uh, we wanted to get this knocked out of the way uh, as soon as possible because uh, in between now and then it's going to be a lot of dead time. So we want to cut that time down as most we can. So uh, hopefully some of this stuff is going to look interesting. If nothing else, we just wanted to keep you guys updated in the process and just say that we weren't sitting on our asses uh, before the V3 gets made. So uh, let's walk in with a now somewhat less functional V1 prototype. We can't do 50 work with dogs on them. It's like really distracting. Um, okay, so there's kind of a list of things that it's all little small tweaks. Doing stress analysis? Yeah, it's gonna be really shitty, but <laughs> it'll give us an idea. Yeah, with not really knowing the load. Um, let's just for shits and giggles, let's say 5,000 psi. Yeah, now just uh, I guess we have to do just a little something on the bottom side of the dust cover so that it fills that gap so there's no chance for it to flex at all. Yeah, the only ones are, I mean, it's a equals on those sides. And then I put the radius for, for those. Production-wise, we're going to be doing probably the rail separate, like it's screwed in. Okay. Like with the four different attachment points there, or the four screw points, so you can always remove it. That way people can do like the zero MOA mounts, the 15 MOA mounts. Because so when you're doing really long distance shots, a lot of times they want to angle the Picatinny a little bit. Okay. So that you don't have to adjust your scope, your optical like fucking all the way down there. Oh yeah. That's right on 0.3 inches. I don't even know what to say. We were looking for the biggest SolidWorks CAD files we had on our computer. And uh, he wins. Typically, I think, what's the AK-50 file at? Um, the entire assembly. The entire assembly is like 5 megabytes, I think. Yeah. You've got a 40 megabyte banana. <laughs> Ladies. There have been a lot of banana jokes looking for that thing. It's nice and veiny, though. <laughs> what's the scale on that thing? I'm curious. Uh, 25.4 times bigger than it should be. For scale, uh, the AK-50 compared to this giant-ass banana. <laughs> Actually, I think that it might be bigger than 25.4 times what it should be. This is just going to bother me, but there should be a massive fucking chamfer here, so I'm just going to pull one in. So the average banana is 7 to 8 inches. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you for that much needed clarification. I can die now. And this gentleman is why it's taken three years to get to market. Are we making it thicker or are we moving the rail? Thicker. Okay. Just, just thicker, so that's, that's not really a problem. Yeah, it should be doable. Making it thick. Also, if any company out there would like to sponsor me for energy drinks, uh -huh. I'm willing to whore myself for you. For caffeine. So if you remember the entire pain in the ass that it was to uh, press the barrel in and out, all those times we had to do that of the uh, receiver and the barrel extension, uh, this is going to be the fix for all of that. We're threading the barrel extension right now, so. I think I made the threads backwards. Oh, fuck. Peel back on the dust cover. I forgot, I wanted this to swing like right up and like be parallel, at least like cosmetically have it look good. Because uh, it's a little, this receiver has to sit a little higher. It just looks badass. Like I was saying, like yeah. an AK-50 crank would more or less look like that. Just chop the fucking barrel and I mean, that's basically, if, and you know what the funny part is? I actually think we measured this at one point. If you pinned and welded it from the gas block, it would be still 16 inches. That's like a legal length, technically. That's not even an SBR. One more <laughs> banana shot before the end. Boom. Just so you know, I did set the material to oak. <laughs> <laughs> Got some nice hard wood there for you. <laughs>
Oh so my god, you know it's been a long fucking day just working and driving with a fucking banana is this funny. <laughs> oh shit. Well, I think we're good. Um, that's a wrap before things get too gay. We'll see you when we inevitably fuck something up. <laughs> Alright. <laughs> it is now the 20th of June, and uh, we are on our way up to Virginia to uh, just east of Petersburg. Go visit Josh Wiley, who actually has his own machine shop up there. And uh, we're going to do a little bit of content with him, do a little uh, collaborations on a couple things, but he also is going to help us out with some of the AK-50 parts. So we're going to go over some of the files, see what he wants to, uh, see what he's capable of taking on, and see what he wants to help out with. We sent a couple of the other files out to Viridian Defense Corps, uh, out to a couple of other shops that we're working on. This is really kind of a barn racing, so as our final prototype here, uh, or hopefully, fingers crossed, the final prototype before we hit our pre-production prototypes on the V3, uh, we are sending it out to a couple of different places to have this stuff made. And so I, I hope a lot of this stuff is gonna be kinda cool to watch, but we'll, we'll see what happens. But it's really cool now that we're finished with the models and we're actually making this stuff happen. So we'll see what happens today. This right here is a, uh, is a new one to the collection. This one is uh, the Stark 47, which is uh, my business partner, Mike. Uh, we taught him how to build uh, an AK, and so this is uh, the post sample that we built for Stark Media Group. So, pretty fun. Let's see how Josh likes it. Keep a good, aggressive stance on it. And make sure she doesn't push you back. So Josh has never shot a machine gun before, yeah, first so. First time ever. Gotta shoot his, uh, pop his full out of cherry. What'd you think? Uh, I wish you had more ammo. Yeah, I know. I think you need to do a mag dump when you come down. Yeah, I appreciate it, though. We'll, uh, we'll definitely get it back to see if we can do work. So basically, guys, the punchline is uh, we have finished all the models for the AK-50 V3. We're commissioning the parts. We're sending it out different places, getting them quoted so we can get them uh, machined. And hopefully, as soon as we possibly can, get them back so we can put it all together and show off the finished pre-production AK-50 V3, and I'm super stoked about it. In the meantime, I'm gonna be doing what I'm always doing and uh, working on customer guns, getting those out. So uh, we're gonna do a quick test fire here, and uh, this is the 47 of 47 from our 47 runs. So uh, shipping these out, this one is going to uh, Michael, Michael J. So Michael, here's your gun. And I think that's a wrap. <laughs> and I think that's a wrap.